Today, I would like to give you a basic introduction to sets and subsets. I want to start with the definition of what a set is. A set is a well-defined, unordered collection of distinct objects. And these objects are often called elements. The notation that mathematicians use for a set is a capital letter. Notice this is capital. And set parentheses. So see these brackets, these are what are called set parentheses. I want to give you a little remark. These parentheses are different than this. This is actually not a set but rather is an ordered pair. Now hopefully you're familiar with the concept of ordered pairs. And I want to give you some examples. I'm going to give you some true-false examples that you could see on test questions. Let's see, for the first example, let's look at this. And Let's see. So pause the video for a moment, maybe copy this down on a piece of paper, and see if you can answer these true-false questions. And I'll go over it. Okay, hopefully you've tried to look at these and see if you could go over this. Uh, the first question here wants to know if the set containing the elements 1 and 2 is the same as the set containing the elements 2 and 1. In other words, does order matter when we're writing a set? And to get to this, we always have to go to the definition to see exactly what it says. And on some level, a definition is very much like a contract uh, that a lawyer might write up. And you have to look at it the way a lawyer might look at it. So it's a set is a well-defined, meaning it's clear what's inside it, unordered collection. Now, unordered means order doesn't matter, of distinct objects. So... Here, order clearly doesn't matter, and so this is true. Pause the video for a minute and maybe write down that when listing the elements in a set, order does not matter. Order does not matter. But if you look at these two ordered pairs, here one comes first and then two, followed by two coming first and then one, order does matter. In fact, if we look at number two, if we were to use the Cartesian coordinate system that everybody should be familiar with from high school and junior high school. If we were to plot 1 comma 2 on this coordinate system, we would get this point here. I'm sorry. Uh, yikes. A little mistake. That's okay. If we were to plot 1, 2, we would get this point over here. And if we were to plot 2, 1, we would get this point over here. Let me label this for you. This is 1, 2, and this is 2, 1. Notice these are distinct points. The word distinct means different. So because of that, 
we see that these two ordered pairs are different. They are not equal to each other. While these two sets are equal to each other. I want to be very clear about that. So pause this video for a minute if you want to reflect on the fact that for ordered pairs, order does matter, but for sets, order does not matter. Now let's look at number three. For number three, we have a set on the left-hand side of this alleged equation, and we have an ordered pair. On the right side, and because these are different objects in mathematics, this has to be false. So hopefully uh, you're clear on the difference between an ordered pair and a set. Now we talk about elements being in sets. If you look at the definition here, a set is a well-defined, unordered collection of distinct objects, also known as elements. So we can speak of elements being in a set. This element is, in fact, in this set, so this is true. But we don't speak of elements being inside an ordered pair, or an ordered triple, or an ordered, what eventually we will call an n-tuple, which has n elements that are ordered. So this is actually false. We don't speak of elements inside an ordered pair. So I, I want to write this down as a remark for number five. We don't speak of elements being in ordered pairs. However, we do speak of coordinates. The idea of what a coordinate is is a very, very deep mathematical concept. And hopefully you'll have an intuitive idea of what a coordinate is. And it can be defined very precisely, but it requires a frame of reference to define this. So. We've done some basic examples about sets. I want to give you a, another definition that's important. So definition one is what a set is. Definition two, I want to tell you what an empty set is. Definition two, the empty set is a set with no elements. I want to give you some notation. Phi, this is a Greek letter phi, or simply a set with no elements is called the empty set. Now I want to give you some examples. Phi is empty, true, false, seven. This is empty, true, false, and eight. The set containing the empty set is empty, true, false. And how about nine? The set containing the empty set is the empty set, true, false, 10. Phi is an element in the empty set. True false. No element is an element in true false. And oh, this is something sometimes confuses students. V is in the empty set. True false. And 13. V is in the 17 empty set. True false. So pause the video and see if you can answer these multiple choice questions and then come back. So let's look at number six, which says the empty set is empty. That should be obviously true. And number seven, this is just another term for the empty set, so that should obviously be true. But number eight sometimes throws college students. Number eight is saying the set containing the empty set is empty. And this is a set containing the concept of emptiness, but the concept is something uh, which makes it not empty. But one of my previous students, whose name was Ray, came up with a better way to teach this to college students. He said, a folder containing an empty folder is not empty. 
and I thought, wow, that's the best explanation that I've heard as an analogy for why the set containing the empty set is not empty. Uh, number nine, the set containing the empty set equals the empty set. That's false for the same reason. It's not empty, so it can't possibly be the empty set. So now, number 10 sometimes confuses college students. Probably not at this point, but co confuses college students with the distinction between being an element in a set and being a subset of a set. So I want to be really clear that this is a false statement. And if you contrast this with number 11, this is a true statement. Number 11 says the set containing the empty set is an element in the set containing the empty set, and that's false. Number 12, the empty set is in the empty set. And so here, the empty set is not an element in this set. So this is false. Now, pause the video for a moment if you need to and look at number 13. Because here we see the empty set is, in fact, in the set containing the empty set. So this is true. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you all for watching.